Hello and welcome, warriors. Hope you guys are having an absolutely lovely day. I have been revisiting Tales of Arise. What a magnificent action RPG. And I decided, why not? There's no videos up for this game on my channel, and it has been several years since its initial release. Why not update the internet with the best possible information? In case you're new here, that's what my channel is all about, is providing you with ways of breaking RPGs and the best builds on the internet. So the earliest possible opportunity to absolutely hold Tales of Arise down and teabag it ceaselessly would be our second trip to Autolina Palace, once, of course, we have defeated Dohalim, and this location becomes populated with the Menancia Royal Guard, meaning all of the various soldiers in this location. The reason for this is they are the earliest example of a enemy that drops three massively beneficial items. The silver dog tags and astral mass will sell for a ton of money, can both be stacked up to 99, and all of these enemies also drop peach gel, which can be abused to instantly and infinitely keep our health points at full so we never need to leave, never need to break our chain combo. Of course, we need somewhere to sell these items. We can simply teleport ourselves to the inn, which is beautiful because we can also refresh our more dropped items food effect from low high kaito and we can also infinitely purchase now happy bottles which when used will refill fully the combo bonus gauge gained from combat and can be abused to increase the amount of items obtained from enemies. Now what makes this location special is that in any of or most of the other locations with regards to farming enemies, once the bonus gauge is maxed out, you have a high probability of running into super bosses such as the dragon that would be located on the Menencia Highway directly outside of this. And that is to say that if you're going to farm other locations, it's just going to be more of a pain because either the monsters are going to be far more difficult to defeat, interrupt your chain bonus gauge, or in certain instances, simply be impossible to defeat. Not only this, in many of the other areas, you can only respawn enemies by resting at a campfire or resting at a and in would almost be mandatory really because of course you're going to be using all of your cure points in order to constantly keep your party fighting fit whereas here we can simply abuse the fact that they drop peach gel in order to constantly keep our party at full hit points if this was not enough in all of the other areas we once again need to revisit the inn or the campfire in order to respawn the enemies. Whereas here, we can simply enter and exit one of the adjacent chambers. And I highly suggest the staff quarters on the second floor because all of the soldiers drop the same items. Doesn't matter if they're a sword, spear, or a gun user meaning the gun users are the easiest to defeat, and they're located directly next to a room where we can respawn them. Eventually, we will be fighting several golden versions of these particular enemies, and the reason this is important is because the golden enemies, of course, drop even more, just even more of all of the items. So let's go ahead and break this dude right here. Swap back. The quicker that you can get to strike, the more efficient this is going to be, especially if you're using abilities that kill all of the enemies. Seven astral mass 
in one encounter from regular not even golden enemies this can be further expedited and its efficiency improved to an insanely ludicrous degree if you put rare drop rate up small on all of the characters except one who you should use a lucky bangle because item drop rate and rare drop rate up are completely independent and they do stack Item drop rate up will give you more peach gel, and rare drop rate up will give you more dog tags and astral mass. Once you have a stack of 99 astral mass, or failing that, 99 silver dog tags, and you run out of happy bottles or any of the other items you need, simply teleport yourself back to the inn and back to the palace, and you have a 100% self-sustaining indefinite grind loop that is very very easy to exploit if you do this for approximately one to two hours depending on how quickly you can defeat the enemies how good you get at doing this you can of course purchase each and every last single skill for each and every last single character which will only further break your party even on the highest difficulty setting and you will have acquired enough money to immediately purchase all of the best equipment from this point forward as soon as it becomes available no grind required what does this mean it means that a two hours might seem like a long time to do this but in the grand scheme of things these games are known for being very long most jrpgs are between 100 and 150 hours in order to max out see and do everything this will cut that almost in half with the investment of two to three hours and that's all there is to it let me know how you feel about it down in the comments section there is a better version of this albeit much later on once we reach Lenegas, but waiting that long on the higher difficulties is going to be the much more frustrating experience a little knowledge goes a long long way please let me know if you appreciate the guide down in the comment section or smashing that like button it does help and until the next time I post a video, I hope you guys have an absolutely lovely day, night, whatever the case may be. Peace out.